I don't know if I'll ever include this in the vlog, but I figured if I pride myself on showing a real portrait of what life is like having online class, might as well. Um, I have like, I didn't film yesterday. I didn't really get anything done except send a few emails and stuff, but I have so many things to do. And like, I didn't get to do anything today because I was so tired. And I feel like crap because I have so many things to do in like, in like less than a week. And I can't bring myself to like start. And it's just the amount of things for finals just piling on top of each other just paralyzes you even more. And you don't want to do any of them. And we suddenly have, a, which might, if mom is like considerate, I guess, or if, she, if she's going to consider what we're gonna say then she might she might um remove the paper on possession that we have to do on the story by us by it because we still have the final paper because let's say it's still part possession response paper and the 32 paper i have to read the iser text and then 42 and go through the whole module and the critical analysis that's 6 to 10 pages long which I still haven't started on I settled on a theory but I still need to read this one text just so that I have more sources and then I have that history group thing that's 3500 pages I have a PE module and we have to analyze this match by group and I'm really trying to not let it get to my head. I'm sorry to cut out. But like, just the thought of it, like, I still do the copy editing exam that's like so freaking long for Admo Press. Uh, mm, just, when I list it down, maybe it doesn't seem like a lot. Maybe people who have already graduated college will watch this and be like, it's nothing or that's normal but like just piled on top of like the things that I have to worry about on a daily basis it's just a lot like I'm jealous of the people who kind of just have school th to worry about and not actual life like, you know, don't get me wrong. I do acknowledge that I'm privileged compared to people, but... Sometimes I just wish that I could just think about school, you know? But, yeah, um... I got Dan's new book today, so that's, that's a good thing. Um, I'm really happy about it. I just hope that I can get some rest today. I worked out yesterday, so that's great. Maybe I'll clean the house tomorrow. Gotta do some errands for the family in the next few days, just printing stuff and gathering stuff for papers and whatever. So I'm worrying about a lot of house stuff and family stuff and school and it's really hard to to like focus on what I'm not doing for school when I'm worrying about so many other things and it's just hard but yeah I don't know if I'm gonna show this cause it's kind of sad like I don't really want people to like feel sad when they see this but you know, it's really hard when everything piles up. And it's not, it's not, oh god, I forgot about the history text that I still have to read. And the discussion boards and everything. Like, it's really hard when, I don't even remember that train of thought. I don't, I don't remember where it went, but yeah, it is difficult to, 
to juggle everything and oh yeah like it's 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 not that it's hard because it's I'm pile it's piling up because I let it it's piling up because every time I finish one thing there's another thing I rest for a few days or maybe just a day and then there's more and then I know that this is just it's finals so it's just like one last push but it's so hard I'm trying to hold myself back right now so that I don't have a full on breakdown on camera but it feels like shit it feels like shit and I don't think anyone will ever understand how hard it is unless they feel it right now so like to anyone who's going through this right now is having online class I hope you know that you're not alone and other people are struggling in one way or another in their own way so I hope we get through this and we can do it together and it's gonna be fine we're all gonna finish it and we're gonna laugh about it someday or look back in horror you know <laughs> But yeah, um, last push for sophomore year. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Tell them what we're doing today. Okay, so, mm, today, yes, wait, first yesterday, I got six sources for my NLIT 42 critical analysis, and I tried to read the transnational nationalism text, but I failed miserably because I could not focus. The red is getting out of my hair. Great, that's the plan. I'm trying to dye it a different color soon. Anyways, so today I have to go places and run some er errands. So that means that I can't do all of my work. But because I worked out full three videos plus warm up and cool down this morning, I feel energized. I don't feel the need to nap for three hours today. So while waiting before I leave, I will be sifting through my sources or going through the history module. Either way, I'm gonna get work done and I'll be walking the dogs within an hour. Say bye to Nissy. <laughs> Hello, it is day five of this week, and I just wanted to share this part that gave me chills, and it's um, a passage from something that Nick Joaquin wrote in Manila, My Manila, History for the Young. This is from 329 to 34, I think. So. But where I'm reading it is from State and Society in the Philippines, Box 8.2, From Beatles to Barricades, 1969-1972. So I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's long, but it gave me chills, like, just describing it. <laughs> My favorite part was, um, the later 60s brought in the shirt jack, the mini, the beetle hair, the twiggy haircut, the Mau Mau and the Mask K-Pops? I don't, I don't know what that is. Mask Pops? <laughs> Expressions like Dehin Goli and Pogi. <laughs> Unbathed and handsome, respectively. <laughs> the turtleneck t-shirt in apple green worn with fancy necklaces and pendant skin-tight jeans and the coming of the Age of Aquarius. In 1968, we were singing Hey Jude and Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. We were singing a very different tune when the 1970s began. Maki Baka. Struggle became the cry of a January evening in 1970 when Marcos and Imelda emerged from the Congress, opening to find themselves being booed, rushed, and stoned by youth picketers. The storm of demos had burst that would rage the whole year. So, this whole box is like, it's so well- I'm sorry, I didn't realize that I was like doing that. I'm so sorry. I got so excited because Nick Joaquin 
oh, amazing writer. And just this like whole like passage is just one box, just a few paragraphs. He managed to explain 1969 to 1972, like obviously not in depth, but like at least like some of the pop culture and the popular like proceedings at the time. And what gave me the chills was like the resurgence of 1970s fashion right now, and like the political climate right now, and how everyone is like very aware of the things that are happening. Just the fashion coming back, and it's currently also the age of Aquarius is just so weird. Like it was like 50 years ago. It was also like hmm, kind of the same thing ish. Okay, no, I'm not gonna like similar energy, similar energy, but like sorry, uh, my timer went off for my studying time, but similar energy like i think that's crazy how like everything like people were cha chanting down with imperialism feudalism fascism but and <laughs> there's a part here that said the youth gang that was to make history jose maria sison's kabataang makabayan exerted on campuses the strongest snob appeal of all it was very now and very mod to be a KM, especially if you were moneyed and burgis. <laughs> like, I don't know what that makes me laugh. It's like, it reminds me of like woke culture now. Like, there are pros and cons to being like woke, especially nowadays when most of like being what being woke constitutes, it just means um you know armchair activism but at the same time you know that's a whole other discussion of like what helps and what doesn't and what you can and can't do at this point in time especially because of the pandemic so that's a whole other thing but is it that's so crazy <laughs> they also had like their own version of like like woke it's it's so trendy to be like political right now <laughs> like just so funny in a dark way so yeah i think 70s were i would say an underrated era in terms of history because a lot of people like to glamorize 80s and 90s i mean of course it's nice but i think my favorite decade not to glamorize it or anything is the 70s for how people fought and I guess it looked different in different countries so yeah but the fashion was also great and the music so yeah that's all I'm going to say my hair looks super flat because I, I tied it immediately after washing it yeah, I'm gonna continue this now because I have like like an hour until I have and until I need to do to have dinner. So see you tomorrow. Just as a disclaimer, because I don't want to seem insensitive to the topic of the Marcos administration because a lot of people were hurt and activists were killed at the time. So I mean absolutely no disrespect to anyone who was hurt by that or anyone's family members who was hurt by that. I just want to talk about this in a way that seems accessible for people who don't study this and also to engage the interests of people who might be interested in history but are kind of intimidated by it. I'm sorry, the exposure is really bad. And yeah, I just wanted to kind of appreciate a little bit of the pop culture of the time because it's um it is kind of real funny how time <laughs> seems like a flat circle but yeah anything that i mention is absolutely like not ill intentioned at all and i have no intention of undermining 
people's experiences and struggles in that period okay just to be clear because i do the last thing i would want is to offend anyone by talking about this in a way that might seem lighthearted when it comes to certain topics of that era just to be clear okay yes okay so i think that it is important to look at history as objectively as possible god dang it that freaking exposure sucks man as objectively as possible and learning it you know you see certain people that lean more towards one side or the other but you know that's what reading different sources are for, is for and um I just generally think that it would be interesting someday to read about like certain comparisons between that era and this era because there are certainly pros and cons that scared me oh my god this thing oh my god <laughs> there are certainly pros and cons like how there was no pandemic before and oh gosh i'm trying to look for pros <laughs> okay um but yeah uh, i think it, i am honestly not confident enough in my knowledge of this era to be able to like straight up compare them compared to what's happening now but I think that if you, even if you know just like um, surface level stuff, you'll be able to notice some of the similarities. But I would love to read a freaking research paper about that someday. And just read it and be like, you know what? Yeah, I didn't notice that. So if any of you are excited and, you know, um, if you're a child watching this, first of all, why? <laughs> if you are in college, by the time you are in college, if you need to write a paper, maybe you can write about how there are similarities between Marco's administration and the administration we have now, especially in terms of censorship, you know, with the anti- anti-terror- Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I'm gonna stop because uh, I'm taking up way too much time and I bet this vlog is already gonna be long. And I really need to read this because I'm getting too- towards the middle of this actually no martial law and this reading just started so i'm gonna get into that probably gonna reflect on it at the end of this week i'll see you tomorrow for real so like there's thunder right now so like i'm protecting the babies and um i'm also in the process of making my outline that's all i did today and yesterday i finished my info dump yesterday Sorry, I'm currently on a Discord call. So, like, right now, after this call, I'm gonna leave in a bit. And then I'm gonna finish my outline so that I can start writing my paper because it's due tomorrow. And the discussion board, too, so. Here are the babies, they're super scared. No, Nissy. Stay here, baby. Stay here. It's okay. I'm just trying to be calm. Nissy's really panicking. I just woke up, so like, just don't mind how bloated I look right now, but like, yesterday, I didn't get to say goodbye properly because it was day seven of that vlog, so this is my goodbye for this vlog, and this is actually the second to the last week. Right now, it's actually day one of the last week, so I'm gonna see you there, and no quote of the week, I, no tip of the week, <laughs> because... I'm just stocked up with stuff to do and wonderfully I'm starting the next one with a rant so brace yourselves and see you